So sometimes you'll be in a relationship and the person you're in the relationship with makes the relationship completely uninhabitable. And you try and express to this person how you're feeling and that you would like things to change. And perhaps you even sit them down and explain it, as I suggest, like a five-year-old could understand. You let them know your needs and you communicate that you're not getting those needs met. And if you could get those needs met, you would be much, much more happy. Some time goes by and you notice that the behavior is not changing. And what's worse is that you begin to suspect, perhaps even have some evidence to suggest, that not only is this person not going to change the behavior that's bugging you, but they may be doing it on purpose to push you away. You're put in a situation where you can do nothing to get them to change their behavior, and this is upsetting you greatly to the point where you are pretty much forced to break up with them. You're stuck between a rock and a hard place. This is being called the unwilling dumper. In other words, the unwilling dumper is when you are forced into a situation where you have to break up with somebody, even though you don't really want to break up with somebody. This can be really troubling because you didn't actually want the breakup, and yet now that you've finally done it, you might have some immediate regrets, and you might tell the person, hey, can we try again? Can we fix what happened? I didn't want the breakup but I felt like I had no choice. I felt like you were pushing me to do the breakup. And to a degree, the dumper, which by definition, you are, but in spirit, they are. So I'm referring to them when I say dumper the rest of this video, and I'm referring to you, if this video is even relevant to you, as the unwilling dumper. So you, the unwilling dumper, are talking to the person who effectively pushed you into dumping them, which we are calling the dumper. And you're asking them, hey, you know, I didn't feel really good about this. It's not that I wanted to break up with you. It's just that I felt like you were pushing me to break up with you. And this, my friends, is a form of self-sabotage. This is something that actually has happened to me in the past with the ex-fiance that I've talked about in previous videos, where effectively she had cheated on me in order to end our relationship. So you would be surprised how often situations like this happen. And the reason that I didn't cover this video is because you don't really do much differently, right? You have told the person, I want to work on things. The other person did not want to work on things and put you in a position where it was either deal with whatever they're giving you until they eventually have it and break up with you or break up with them and try and start the healing process early. What makes this so painful for so many people is because it makes them feel as though they're in a position of powerlessness. What can you do if someone else doesn't want to work on things? What can you do if you break up with them and you try and get them back and they don't want you back? It's powerlessness that makes people feel this way in this particular situation. So what do you do about it? Well, powerlessness, power, and who has it, it's all make-believe. The reality is the person who has the power is the one you think has the power. There's no such thing as power. It is simply something's happening to you that you don't want, and you're looking at the other person, in this case, the dumper, not the unwilling dumper, and you're thinking, you can fix this. There was a choice. This didn't have to happen. And so now you have the power to fix this, and you don't want to. So what do I do with that? Well, you walk away. My friends, one of the biggest reasons that we do no contact is because it restores this sense of power within you. No contact is not a tool to get your ex back. It's a tool to remove the power your ex has over you. Because at the end of the day, think about why this happened. You were not being treated in a way that you deserved. You very likely told your ex that you weren't being treated in the way that you deserved, and that if you care, you should treat me differently. Your ex, the dumper, heard what you had to say, ignored it, and perhaps even used it to accelerate the breakup, right? They heard, oh, wow, they don't like being ignored for hours at a time. Let me do that even more. And a common argument I hear is, okay, but maybe if I were less anxious, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe if I were less whatever, this wouldn't have happened. Well, guys, there's only so often you can do that shit to yourselves, because if you communicate how you're feeling and that something is bugging you and that if 
a little change here, a little fix there, a little more communication over here would help you feel a lot better in the relationship. And the other person takes that and uses that to exacerbate your anxiety. It's on them. It's not on you. And so when you break up with them, you did something appropriate. They were acting in a way that made you upset, unhappy. And you did something to end the suffering that you were feeling. You can't then take that and beat yourself up with it because the relationship that you're so sad about losing is a relationship that was not serving you. So don't get me wrong. You are 100% allowed to feel your feelings. That's not what I'm saying. And we all know that logically, many of the breakups you've been through should have happened. We know that. And it takes a while for your emotions to catch up with your logic, and that's okay. But a lot of the time, you really want to sit, especially in the strong moments, you want to sit down, maybe journal things out and say to yourself, okay, wait, I broke up with this person because they were not treating me right. I communicated that I was not being treated right, and they did it more. What relationship am I hoping to go back to? Realistically, what relationship am I hoping to go back to? What benefit do I believe will be given to me if I revisit this relationship? Friends, self-love takes time. It's not just going to happen a week after your breakup. And, of course, nobody likes to feel the big sad feelings. But they do need time to process. They need time to work things out. I've used this example in so many coachings lately. Emotionally, due to the breakup, you've been stabbed. You are now bleeding. And if you're bleeding, is that not the appropriate response to being stabbed? In other words, if a bad thing happened to you, and you feel sad, upset, your day is stretching, it's feeling like a minute is an hour, and these thoughts and feelings seem to only be useful for being intrusive and ruining your day, isn't that appropriate to the situation? A bad thing happened. You feel bad. That's okay. You're allowed to feel bad, and I understand that you all know that you're allowed to feel bad, but nobody wants to feel bad. And that much I understand, but is this not just a sign to show that you were attached to this person, you were connected, and that part of you is working just fine? This hurts because it's supposed to hurt. That's normal. You're normal. Meaning the feelings that happen after that, you can trust because they're a part of the process. And you're normal. And this is supposed to hurt. And you're supposed to give yourself some time. And then you'll eventually feel better. So being put in a position of powerless bugs us because we have this sense that no matter what I do, it will not get better. No matter what I say to this person, it will not get better. The problem within that powerlessness is that you're defining winning as getting them back. Getting them, a relationship that was so bad that you were forced to break up with them, back. I ask you, is that powerlessness? Is there, perhaps, more than one way to define winning in this situation? It's just something I want you to consider. As always, my friends, I am eternally grateful for your listening. I hope this video spoke to you and really helped you figure some things out for yourself. And, you know, some of these videos aren't going to strike you the first time you listen to them. Sometimes you need to be in the right mentality and at the right point of healing for any of these videos to really say something to you. So, obviously, if it's not speaking to you today... Try again a week from today. And as always, know when to quit these videos. Know when to leave this place and grow. If you would like coaching with me, I do offer that service. Just visit thelovechat.net slash coaching. And of course, if you're looking for something beyond coaching, something more along the lines of mental health therapy, I have sponsored with the company BetterHelp that provides licensed counselors. Just visit betterhelp.com slash Rory. Link in the description below. And I'll have another video out for you guys in a couple of days, along with a live stream. But until then, give yourself a break. You're allowed to feel sad. Your feelings matter. This is supposed to hurt, and there's a whole community of people who want to support you. So if you want to join a free community, our Discord link is in the description below. Discord is just basically AOL Instant Messenger, for those who remember. So we would love to have you there. But until that point, give yourself a break. You're doing fine.